Hello everybody, welcome to Me Paintings. I'm Veronica Me, and today I would like to show you what to do with your leftover colors because I just finished this pour and there is loads of colors underneath this canvas which I would like to use for my next project and I've got special idea with this one so hopefully soon you'll be able to see it. These are my leftovers after my pour and I would like to use these as well. So I've got this spatula and I'm going to scrape all of these colors and put them in my cup like this because I want to reuse them and create another matching canvas. And I'm also going to pour these leftover colors from my pour here in this cup because I want to use them all. So that was green. Let's put teal in there. My mauve. And this beautiful magenta. And I've got this old canvas which I don't like anymore so I'm gonna re-pour on it. Again I will pour my white base here which is the same base which I had before. 50% uh, of ac white acrylic color and 50% of pouring medium. Let's, let's keep a little bit for later on. And I'm going to spread it everywhere. So I can start pouring my leftover colors and I start here on the top like this. Now I can move it around a little bit, like this. Now I can use my heat gun again. And I'm gonna do one more thing because I love using balloons in my pores. It creates a beautiful background for my future ideas. So I will use big and smaller balloon and create these balloon kisses here and there in the middle. Ooh, that creates a beautiful background or something special. So few big ones and few small ones. I'm gonna let this dry for about a week or a few days and then I'm gonna show you what to do next with it. Welcome back after five days my pour is completely dry so now I can draw on it or paint some interesting shapes and I'd like to paint some interesting squares here in the middle and for that I'll be using this we wanted to check it away because my children, they are not so little anymore. But then I realized I could use these squares for interesting shapes on my pores. So don't check away things. You can always use them for something, something different. So this will be perfect for drawing squares. And I might 
paint some smaller ones, bigger ones, which will be on the top of each other. And for that, I'm gonna use my whiteboard marker. And the reason why I'm using this is that I can easily wipe it off with wet baby wipes if I make mistakes. That's why I use this. But of course, you can use any kind of pencil or acrylic marker, whatever you prefer. So I will probably paint the biggest one here in the middle and then the rest of them will be smaller or just on the top of each other. So here's the first one. Like this, that will be perfect. And I like that it has got these round corners, which is nice maybe smaller one here and let's turn it like this so it's not all in one line but it's moved yep nice maybe one here Even smaller one here. Great, now some of them will be underneath, so let's decide where should it be, maybe here. Make sure you don't go over these top squares. Great, so this is how it looks and now it's time to embellish them. So I'm going to show you a little detail. Let's show you maybe this one. This one looks nice for the demonstration. I'm going to use my blending brush size 7. But of course it depends on the size of your squares. You can use whatever brush you prefer and I've got a little bit a little bit of a black acrylic color here on my on my uh, plate and I'm using this one black from Solo Goya. I buy these in local archer but I'm sure you can get these online somewhere. So I put my brush in water and then put a little bit of that black color on my brush and go all, all over my square. Let's put it back in water and create a nice 3D, sh 3D shape.
Okay, so that seems all right. And now I'm gonna show you how I do also these other ones. It's the same, absolutely same process. Just go around these edges and try to blend it nicely. Okay, so it seems like my black is dry and I can use my Posca pen, it's acrylic marker and I'm gonna paint, draw a few little reflections on these edges. So maybe I think here. And maybe one more little one here. Like that. And these reflections give that square some 3D feel. Try to make them as thin as possible because if you made them too big, um, it wouldn't look that nice, so... So this is how it looks. My cubes are all finished and now last night I dreamt about this painting and I had an idea to turn it into something special by painting the bottom with black and top with white. So I'm gonna do that and I think these cubes will stand out from the background and it will create a beautiful piece of abstract cubes. So let's mix my black and I will add just a tiny bit of this turquoise color in my black because I would like to add some interesting shade into my black and then I will be using my white for the top.
And last step is painting shadows underneath my cubes. So again, I'm gonna use my black acrylic color, put my blending brush in water and try to paint nice shadows on this side of my cubes. So just a little shade. I won't be painting painting shades here, just where these two cubes meet together. And then I nicely blend it and create a slight shade. So it adds a little bit more 3D feel into it. Maybe one here. And this is the result of my 3D cube acrylic pour. I love that you can have so much fun with this technique and create absolutely amazing, unique piece. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If it inspired you, please make sure to mention me as a source of inspiration. And if you liked it, please give a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. You can also join my Facebook group, Create With Me and show us your beautiful art. Thank you very much for watching my video and for your support. I wish you good health and stay strong. Bye!